Welcome to this tutorial on building a powerful engine in Stormworks. In this video, we'll guide you through the step-by-step -step process of designing, assembling, and fine-tuning an engine that can handle any challenge the game throws at you. To get started, place two crankshafts and cylinder heads from the modular engine components. We're building a 3x3 engine, so if you want to follow along, make sure to use the same configuration. These components will form the foundation of our engine. Next, place a modular engine manifold on the top port the left cylinder. This step is crucial for aligning the large pumps correctly in the following steps. Ensuring proper alignment now will save you time and trouble later on. Attach a cooling manifold, a good tip is to always have the A side the input and B as output. The flow of your loop will be counterclockwise. So B side to the left. Now, it's time to place your pumps. Pay close attention to their orientation, the larger side of the pump is the outlet, and the smaller side is the inlet. Use pipe pieces to connect everything as shown. Once connected, we'll attach the entire setup to a 5x5 radiator. This will help manage the engine's temperature, ensuring it runs smoothly without overheating. Now that everything is connected, we'll attach our radiator. We'll use a few blocks to make it easier to place the radiator onto the pipes. All done. Our basic loop is complete. But is there room for improvement? Absolutely. We have quite a bit of space underneath that radiator. Let's see how we can optimize this setup even further. Let's take it a step further by adding a medium tank. As you place it, make sure to take note of the outlet port's orientation. Use pipes to connect the medium tank to the existing setup. Set the tank to use fresh water by using the select tool. Simply select the tank, and adjust the settings to ensure it's configured for fresh water. Our loop is looking great. We added the tank to boost pressure, but we can enhance it further by adding an additional gas tank. This will increase the pressure even more, allowing us to bump up the flow rate and keep our engine running cool. Everything looks good. If you're using this engine for land or air, you just need to connect the logic and you're all set. For sea use, however, we can take advantage of cooler water temperatures. To further enhance cooling, let's add a liquid-to-liquid -liquid heat exchanger in addition to the air-cooled radiators. Remove the pipe to reveal just enough space for a 2x2 heat exchanger. For proper operation, ensure it's placed correctly. Note the inlet and outlet ports, since our loop is running counterclockwise, the outlets should be at the top. This ensures the water flows in from the bottom radiator port and out through the heat exchanger as intended. Rotate the heat exchanger to ensure it's in the correct orientation. Next, add two medium pumps to ensure cool seawater flows through the heat exchanger. The ribbon on the end of each pump indicates the flow direction, the ribbon marks the outlet side. As before, 
use pipes to connect the pumps and the heat exchanger to the system. Always remember, the shorter the pipes and the fewer the angles, the more efficient your loop will be. Minimizing pipe length and sharp turns reduces resistance and improves overall system performance. Now if that applies to the game I don't know. I'm just the voiceover assistant. But it did sound reasonable. With that said, the game will change over time, and even now you should always do your own testing to make sure you're hitting your targets. It's looking good. When you place your engine into your ship, just connect a few ports to the heat exchanger and pump. Pipe it as needed to fit your setup. If these connections aren't required for your build, you can skip this step. Let's add the radiator back into the system. With this step, the cooling loop is now complete and ready for use. To stay true to our setup, ensure that the A side is always the inlet side. Keeping this consistent makes it easier to diagnose potential issues later on. To duplicate this setup to the opposite side, start by using the select tool. Use Ctrl plus click to select individual items and Shift plus click to add to your selection, ensuring everything on the cooling side is selected. Once copied, press U to rotate your selection and position it correctly. Merge all components using the Merge tool, then copy the entire engine segment as many times as needed to create your inline engine. What a beauty! You now have most of the components needed to start the engine. Next, we'll add an ECU, starters, a clutch, and some logic. Don't worry, it's relatively straightforward. We'll use some workshop items to handle the heavy lifting for us. Next, we need to add the exhaust manifolds. Place one on each side of the cylinder, there should be just enough space for them. Add a fuel manifold and an air manifold to the cylinder as well. Place the fuel manifold on one side and the air manifold on the other. Add an air inlet, such as an air filter, to the air manifold and attach a tank to the fuel manifold. Ensure the fuel tank is set to the correct fuel type. The default is diesel which is the correct fuel for this engine. Verify the settings to confirm everything is configured properly. Next, we'll build a small platform to support the remaining components. This will provide a stable base for mounting the ECU, starters, clutch, and any additional logic. The ECU, or engine control unit, is created by a designer named Zizo. You can find a link to his workshop in the description. He offers many excellent creations to help you get started with your build. Now, place a toggle button and a lever on the platform. The start button will initiate the engine, while the lever will act as out throttle. Let's get everything connected. The toggle button will start the engine, and the lever will adjust its speed. Connect the RPS readout from one of the crankshafts to monitor engine performance. Ensure the air and fuel manifold throttles are properly connected as well. We're almost done. Next, add the clutch from the modular engine section and attach a drive belt. Ensure the drive belt is the correct size, 3x3, to fit properly with the clutch. Add starters to the drive belt. Let's add 8 for a quick engine start. While you don't need this many, having multiple starters will ensure the engine starts rapidly.
Let's connect the remaining components, starting with the eight starter engines. Next, add a battery and connect its readout to the ECU. Connect the clutch then switch over to the composite view and connect the ECU to the cylinder head. This is important and the engine will not start without it. By selecting the ECU, you'll see various options such as cylinder count and RPS limits for idle, max, and clutch. For this build, our target is a steady 14.5 RPS. Also, enable debug mode so you can monitor the engine's performance in real time. Once you're satisfied with the setup, you can turn debug mode off. Connect all the electric nodes to ensure the engine's components are properly powered. You can hover over each connection to confirm that all components have power, when connected properly, they will turn white. This visual cue ensures everything is powered and ready for operation. Let's connect all the pumps and fans to our toggle button as well. Double check everything by hovering over the toggle button connection. All other connections should turn white, confirming that every component is correctly connected. Without being in the sea, it's difficult to fully test whether our heat exchangers are working effectively. At this point, they won't contribute much to cooling since the spawned water will be at the same temperature as the ambient air. However, we'll still add a small tank of water underneath the platform to simulate the setup. We'll add a fluid spawner to the side of the tank and set it to see water in the fluid type settings. We'll also add a liquid sensor to the top of the platform. This sensor will provide a readout of the tank's level and capacity, making it easy to monitor water movement. You should notice slight fluctuations in the values, indicating that the water is being circulated properly. After a quick sanity check, we can see that all our connections are made, and we are ready to spawn it in. For now, we'll enable infinite fuel, given the small size of our tank. While this is not recommended for performance testing as it can artificially increase power output, it's acceptable for verifying that our engine is cooling properly. This should help us ensure the system works without worrying about fuel depletion. Our cooling manifolds look great. With over 900 liters of coolant and a flow rate of over 800 liters per second, the system should perform effectively. As expected, our heat exchanger pumps may not reliably report flow rate and temperature. We'll ignore this for now, as we still have ample cooling capacity. However, this setup will allow you to exceed the 14.5 RPS target without risking engine failure. We'll add a few stairs to the platform. While they won't affect cooling, they provide quick and easy access to our marvelous engine, making maintenance and adjustments more convenient. We'll also use the Move tool to reposition the platform closer to the workbench. This will reduce the need for constant back and forth, making it more convenient to work on the engine. After spawning in the engine, check that all parts are running and everything is functioning as expected. Our target is a steady 14.5 RPS, well within safe operating limits to avoid overheating.
waiting for the numbers to stabilize can be a bit dull, so let's speed things up. Set the RPS limit to 20 RPS and load the engine with a large generator and a gearbox with a 1 to 3 ratio. This setup will provide some resistance and make the engine heat up much quicker, giving us a more dynamic test. And more importantly, quicker. Now then, start the engine and crank that throttle. Look at those numbers go. Looking at the results, we're right on target. Our temperature delta is very low, increasing only slightly. In fact, at 0.1 RPS less, the temperature actually decreases. This indicates that our cooling system is performing effectively and maintaining optimal engine temperatures. Perfect! Our temperature delta is negative, indicating that we are effectively lowering the engine temperature. This means our cooling system is performing beyond expectations and keeping the engine cool even under load. Thanks for tuning in! If you enjoyed watching our engine come to life, don't forget to hit subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and leave a comment, preferably something more creative than nice video. If you have any burning questions or just want to share your own engine building adventures, drop them below. We love hearing from you. Until next time, keep your engines cool and your ideas even cooler. See you in the next video.